There's no difference between January 1st and January 2nd. And there's no difference between a Monday or a Saturday or a Thursday. You decide when you're getting sober. You decide when you're going to distance yourself from the same cast of characters. All right, welcome back to Getting Sober, dot, 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 again. My name is Jay, and today we are going to talk about getting sober on Mondays. But first, make sure that you are subscribed by hitting the subscribe button down below, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up before you forget, and also to at some point, or in many points, leave a comment for either me or somebody in the comment section down below. And also too, I wanna to thank everybody for your patience. This is my busy time of year where I'm getting a lot more work as a photographer and videographer than I was in the winter time. So I'm not able to make as many videos for you and to do as many live streams as I was able to in the past, but I'm still gonna be putting out videos and live streams weekly. So definitely make sure that you have your bell notification turned on to all so that you get all notifications. And then for those of you too that haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You will then definitely get all of the alerts because sometimes YouTube doesn't alert you, right? But uh, the Patreon alerts definitely will hit your phone or mobile device or email address. So make sure you subscribe at patreon.com forward slash getting sober again, all one word. All right, let's get started with today's topic, which is getting sober on Mondays. <laughs> so just like we talked about in previous episodes, we talked about uh, preparing for our sobriety. We talked about the three P's, which is preparation. We talked about practice and we talked about being patient with yourself on your journey into sobriety. And a lot of people fail to do one or all of those steps. And what I mentioned in a lot of our live streams, if you haven't watched yet, and a lot of our uh, previous episodes, is to make sure that you're preparing properly so that you have a successful journey into sobriety. And we talked about it just like we talk about going on a cross country road trip, right? We talk about it just like if you were gonna travel from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast, you wouldn't just pick up your car keys and get in your car and drive away, right? You'd make sure that you had time off from work. You'd make sure that you had gas in the tank. You had more money so that you could fill up the gas tank even more. You knew where you're gonna stay, what sites you wanna see along the way, that you had new windshield wipers, oil change, uh, maybe new tires, whatever it is, you'd prepare for that journey. If you were gonna go to the beach, right? You would prepare by making sure that you had your lawn chairs, your bathing suits. <laughs> you make sure that you have your beach ball, your sand castle building materials. You have your snacks, your cooler. You probably have to clean out that cooler from last year. You make sure that you're preparing for that journey, right? And Mondays seems to be a day that a lot of us decide that that's when we're gonna get sober. <laughs> for a lot of us too, we tend to turn to uh, days like, uh, or milestones like a, New Year's Eve, right? A New Year's New Year's resolution. And then we end up parting our asses off on New Year's Eve and then wake up with a huge hangover on New Year's Day, not putting our best foot forward, right? And then it uh, ends up being the same thing on a Monday, right? For a lot of people from all of the, the thousands of comments that I've gotten and all of the emails that I've gotten, all of the, the participation that I get in the live streams, a lot of people will still say, I'm gonna get sober on Monday. And then they prepare by feeling obligated to drink the rest of the alcohol in the house. And they'll say like, well, I've got like three beers left and I've got a bottle of wine and like a half a bottle of vodka, trigger warning. But I have to get rid of all that first because I don't wanna waste all that money. It's like, there, what are some other methods of getting rid of alcohol. I'm willing to bet <laughs> that you as an adult, hopefully you're an adult, not a child watching this was an alcohol problem, but you as an adult probably have other friends who are also alcoholics, if we're calling ourselves that. You know I don't like calling myself that, right? And you shouldn't call yourself that too, right? I'm Jay, the end. <laughs> but make sure to get rid of the alcohol. You wouldn't start your journey across the country. You wouldn't say like, all right, we're gonna drive from the East Coast to the West Coast. But first, I gotta drink these three beers and this bottle of wine and this half a bottle of vodka before I start this journey. I wanna make sure that I accomplish and I, I make sure to get from, from the East Coast to the West Coast and I'm gonna start off by poisoning myself. Does that sound like a good idea? No, but still sometimes 
a lot of people, not sometimes, a lot of times, people have like, oh, it's Friday, Friday, bleh, and then you go and drink after work on Friday. And then it's like, well, I got Saturday and Sunday. And then so I got Saturday and Sunday and I could still, I could be sober on Saturday and Sunday. And of course I'll be sober on Saturday and Sunday. And then you wake up on Saturday and then, uh, I don't know, a friend messages you, a friend that you haven't seen in a long time, right? Or maybe if you're in a relationship, uh, that person maybe wants to go out and go have brunch. Cause also too, during the recording of this episode, the weather happens to be nice outside. And maybe you want to go get brunch. Maybe you want to go get brunch in a patio. Maybe you're at the end of a worldwide pandemic and the thing, and everybody's, everything's been closed for a whole year and all you want to do is just see other people and be normal again right and then so that stands in the way of my sobriety goals because you know fun first and questions last if that's your attitude you're probably gonna fail you know and you know if you know me by now if you're not if you don't know me if you don't know this channel the vibe of this channel first of all welcome uh make sure that you're subscribed make sure that you leave a comment if this is your first time watching a video comment below if it's your second time watching a video, comment below. And if you just comment below, <laughs> I will, I promise I will message you back. Uh, I've been trying to get more back in the habit of, uh, I'm, I'm also, I'm taking classes right now and then I'm also working. So bear with me. All right. I'm trying to do everything all at once and I'm trying to be my best self. And I'm always praying not only just, not only for you, but for me so that I have the energy to do all of the things that I want to do, which is something that we need to be keenly aware of with our sobriety that we're not just going to go into it just how we are we have to prepare right that's part of the journey we have to prepare for our sobriety and for a lot of people today happens to be a monday you could still watch this video if it's tuesday or wednesday or whatever and i hope that you're watching i hope that you're enjoying if you're not watching this on a monday comment below but a lot of people will drink on, on Friday, they'll drink on Saturday, they'll drink on Sunday and basically poison themselves for three days and then put so much pressure on arguably the worst day of the week, Monday. <laughs> and then you have to get through your work day. You just, you just had two and a half days of never having to see Bob again or Karen or your assistant or your regional manager or whoever. You didn't have to listen to a single customer complain. You didn't have to put up with any BS that you didn't want to. You got to do everything that you wanted to do. And for a lot of you, you chose to poison yourself. Was that a good move? No, probably not. Did you have fun? Maybe. Were you probably hung over on one of those days? Maybe. Have you been doing this week after week, month after month, year after year? Probably, decade after decade. Hopefully not, but also probably, right? And then so we're putting a lot of pressure, just like we talked about in a previous episode, we talked about, are you putting too much pressure on sobriety, right? Just the act of sobriety alone isn't gonna fix your credit score. It's not gonna fix your relationship single-handedly. It's not going to fix anything individually. So as we know that, if we hit the we hit the video description down below and we see the tenets of getting sober again, I just made it up. It didn't get passed down from God and etched into marble tablets or whatever. It's just something I wrote. Feel free to add some, we can add some. I'm all about constructive criticism. <laughs> I'm not cutting my hair, so don't constructively criticize me that way. But if we think about what we need to do, if we think about different tenets of sobriety, if we think about what we need to do and what we need to be mindful of. We need to be mindful of certain facts like sobriety alone isn't going to fix any one thing. Sobriety isn't a task that you just finish. It's not painting the house or cleaning out the garage. When you clean out the garage, the garage is clean and then it's clean until you get it dirty again, right? Or if you paint the house, the house is it's, it's the way it is, and then it's painted, and then the end. You clean out the refrigerator, you go to the grocery store, you take out the trash, those are tasks. Sobriety is not a task, right? Sobriety is a journey, and a journey that you will be on for the whole rest of your life. I'm not saying that it's going to be, or has to be, a struggle for the rest of your life. It just is a journey that you will be on and that you will learn from, and you will make mistakes, and you will fall down, and you will get back up. Unless, for some people, they fall down, and then that's the last time they fall down, and then, you know. But that's not you. And for a lot of people, too, with all, again, all of the thousands of comments that I've read, all the thousands of comments that I've responded to, 
I see people like you. I see a lot of people who still have what it takes to succeed. And that is the will to succeed, the will to get back up. Knowing that you weren't your best self maybe on Sunday or Saturday or Friday or last month or last week, 30 days ago or 60 days or 90 days or six years ago, whatever your current streak of sobriety is, comment below. Yes, pause the video for two seconds and comment below. How long have you been sober? Also part of our live streams, I like to brag. I like to put up, there's a big, we invented a big board now. There's a big board and I write out, I'll hand write out like how long you've been sober. So that's more encouragement for you to hit the notification bell, turn all of your icons or turn your icon into to all so you get all of the notifications so that you can join our live stream and we can give you some more incentive for being sober, right? But it is a lifelong journey. And when we go into a Monday, just like when we put so much pressure on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, it's just a day. It's just an illusion. Time is an illusion, correct? 365 days has how many times that the earth spins? It takes the earth one year, 365 days to go around the sun. And every 24 hours, the earth spins. So it's all just an illusion. That's all that it is. January 1st means nothing to the cosmos. And there's no difference between January 1st and January 2nd. And there's no difference between a Monday or a Saturday or a Thursday. You decide when you're getting sober. You decide when you're going to distance yourself from the same cast of characters that would love for you to sit at the bar next to them, that would love for you to come over and get trashed on game day. It's until you distance yourself from those people. It's until you stand up for yourself the first time that somebody calls you an expletive for making a decision that is for you and not for them, right? In previous episodes, we talked about people that are, we talked about people gaslighting you, right? Making you feel like you're crazy. People that also, they maybe don't want to feel, they don't want to feel left out. So what do they do? They make you feel bad because you're abandoning them. That's not your fault. That's entirely a you problem for them. That is their problem. Their issues with abandonment is not your problem. Your issues with abandonment might be your problem. You may need to solve that eventually, but right now it's one thing at a time. We're not putting too much on our plate, but what we are doing in our journey into sobriety, our journey into sobriety, right? And the journey of sobriety that we're currently on, which maybe has an asterisk. If you started and you had a, a day where you fell off the wagon. Maybe some of you have asterisks. Do you have an asterisk on your day? Comment below. If you don't know what I'm talking about, also comment below and I'll clarify for you what an asterisk means on your current streak of sobriety. That's until you start to change things like maybe where you're sitting in the house, where are you watching the game? Maybe we're not watching, maybe we're taking a couple days off the game. Maybe we realize that uh, all we were doing was just heavily, just binge drinking. All we were doing is just binge drinking while we were watching the game. Maybe we just don't do that anymore. Maybe we don't do that for a little while. Maybe we don't go back to the same restaurant where the bartender knows us because we always tip really well and they want to give us a glass of wine and we know the owner and they come by with a bottle of wine. How do you say no to free booze? That's the Achilles heel of most alcoholics, right? Free alcohol. Who could say no to free alcohol, right? But we're going to practice that. We're going to practice saying no to alcohol. We're going to practice saying, no, nah, I'm taking a break. No, nah, I'm doing a cleanse. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing 30 days. I'm doing 30 days of sobriety and you're going to be proud of it. You're not going to say, no, I'm not. You're going to watch the two. The, here's two different body languages. Watch this. You're, you're the restaurant owner. You're coming over with a bottle of wine and then you offer me the bottle of wine and I say, oh no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking for like 30 days. So versus the restaurant owner comes over and offers the bottle of wine and says, oh no, I'm actually, you know, right now I'm actually doing a 30 day cleanse and I'm feeling really, really good. I'm only a couple of days in, but uh, I can't wait to see the results. So rain check. Thank you. Pretty easy, right? You know, it might not be easy for you. I know you don't have the silky smooth radio voice that I have sometimes or the nasally Cleveland accent that I also sometimes have, but you're going to say it in your own words. You're going to say it in a way that you believe so that other people believe it. Be proud of your decision. Be proud about your sobriety. And if you're not there, you will be. You just might not be there yet because it is a journey. You get to certain places along a journey. There will be a place where the cravings are little to none. 
but maybe in your journey, the cravings are seemingly constant when you don't know when they're gonna go away and I think I'm just gonna go back but now, and then you just get through a night. For some people, it's just getting through the first 24 hours because you just don't believe in yourself because past you has consistently let future, current and future you down. You in the past always just chose to drink. You in the past just always chose worse decisions instead of better decisions. And past you didn't care about who you are currently or you in the future. Past you just cared about feeling better now. Feelings on demand. That's all that past you wanted. But you currently don't want to be you from the past. You want to be a different version of you in the future. So you right now have to make a decision. You right now might have to binge watch all 108 episodes of Getting Sober dot 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 again. Or whatever it is that's going to get you through today. That's going to get you through the next 10 minutes. That's going to get you through the next three days or a week or a month. We have to prepare our space. We have to prepare, maybe change our route home. Maybe we have to change our friends. Maybe we also too have to know that we may feel a little lonely, especially if you surrounded yourself with shit people. If you surround yourself with shitty people, if all your friends are alcoholics, of course, nobody wants to be challenged. None of those people want to be challenged to have to be a better version of themselves. Maybe you're a retiree and it's literally everybody just goes to the bar, they meet, that's where they go, that's what you do. And then maybe sometimes you do some stuff outside of the bar, but then it just involves alcohol. Maybe you're in your 30s or in your 40s and everything that you've done since you've turned 21 involved alcohol. It's lifestyle changes. It's not just simply removing the alcohol. And when we get to Monday, you can't put so much pressure on Monday. Monday is just an illusion. Monday is arguably the worst day of the week because you still got four more days of work after this, if that's your schedule. But you get what I'm saying. Why would you put so much pressure on one of the worst days of the week? I know that your associations are gonna be, you get off work, you wanna drink. I know that you think it's impossible to be sober on the weekend because the weekend's for fun. The weekend, the weekend is for the opposite of work. The weekend is to be reckless. The weekend is to see friends and hang out, to go to bars and go to restaurants, go dance and do whatever you want to do that's not work because nobody tells you what to do on the weekends. I understand. But that's just a construct of your own mind. If it is impossible, if you believe it's possible, if you believe it's impossible, then it's impossible. If you believe it's possible, it's possible. So with that, I want to wish you good luck on your journey. Don't put so much pressure on Monday. Make sure that you're preparing for sobriety when Monday comes or New Year's Day comes or your birthday or whatever day that you put fictional importance on as a start date for your sobriety. And with that, I want to wish you good luck on your journey and I will see you in the next video.